Okay, so today's topic is a little math based. You can see some of the problems we're going to solve with something called dimensional analysis. Let's get started. Okay, so with dimensional analysis, it is a visual method to help us convert from one unit to another, and we're going to use fractions to visualize. Throughout the slideshow, we might need some of these conversions right here. So these are going to be here the whole time. If you're in my actual biology class, I'm not going to ask you to memorize a bunch of conversions. I'll give you a big collection, a big bank of them, and, and you'll have to figure out which one to use uh, at which time. So some of these we might use in this slideshow, others we may not. So in the first problem, here's a map showing Los Angeles to Chicago, Illinois. And the distance is 3,200 kilometers. What if we needed to know how many miles is that? Well, we've got a problem. Kilometer is a metric number, and we're trying to figure out miles, which is imperial. So I can't just move a decimal point left or right like I would a metric conversion. So now we're going to use dimensional analysis, and I'm going to start by taking the given number, 3,200 kilometers. I'm going to make a fraction by dividing by 1. When you divide by 1, you don't change the value of the number. Divided by 1, it still means 3,200 kilometers. The benefit, though, is I can see that the 3,200 kilometers is in the numerator position. And that's going to help me in a moment. With dimensional analysis, my next step is really just a multiply sign and a division bar. And what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to cross-cancel kilometers. I want to cancel kilometers from my work here because I want my final answer in miles. And so kilometer is currently in the numerator position on the left. So on the right side, I'm going to place it in the denominator position. I want my final answer in miles. So if you look at the conversions on the left, I'm going to use this one right here. 1.6 kilometers is equal to one mile. And in the, in the conversion on the left, you can see wherever the kilometer is, that's where the 1.6 is. Keep the 1.6 with the kilometers. And since kilometer is in the denominator position, that's where the 1.6 goes. And then the mile is just uh, with the number one. Now the benefit is that the two kilometer units end up cross canceling. And so I'm left with a pretty simple math problem. In the numerator, it's just 3,200 times one mile, and that's 3,200 miles. In the denominator position, it's just one times 1.6, which is 1.6. So I get out a calculator, 3,200 divided by 1.6, and there's my final answer. 3,200 kilometers is the same thing as 2,000 miles. Well, here's a picture showing a student and a teacher talking. The student in blue says, you know, teacher, that's a lot of work. Can't I just divide 3,200 by 1.6? And the teacher says, well, you know, just because you divide in that question doesn't mean you always divide the two numbers. Every question's different. Dimensional analysis allows you to visualize the math. This way you know when to multiply versus when you might divide. Let's do another problem. So now we have a man weightlifting. Let's pretend this is a 15 kilogram dumbbell. We're trying to figure out how many pounds is that. Just like the last problem, I'm going to start with my given number of 15 kilograms. And I'm going to divide by 1. Dividing by 1 does not change the value. It still means 15 kilograms. But now I can see that kilograms is in the numerator position. So in the next step, I can place kilograms in the denominator position so it'll cross cancel. I'm trying to discover my answer in pounds, so that'll go in the numerator position. On the left, I'm going to circle this conversion right here. And notice wherever the pound unit is, that's where the 2.2 goes. And in this case, it's in the top numerator position. And wherever the kilogram is, that's where just the number 1 goes. So the two kilogram units end up canceling, and I just have to multiply these together. 15 times 2.2 equals 33 pounds. The benefit of dimensional analysis, it visually shows me to multiply the two numbers together in this problem, but a moment ago, we, we saw to divide the two numbers. That's the benefit of dimensional analysis. It shows you when to multiply and when to divide. Let's do another problem. So in this problem, a person's laying underneath a tree, and the person says, you know, this tree is about 25 feet tall. I wonder how many centimeters that is. Well, this, this problem has actually uh, not just one conversion that we're going to have to use, but two. There's an extra step in this problem. Let's get started with it. Start with the given number, 25 feet. 
like the other problems, I'm going to divide by 1. It still means 25 feet, but I can now clearly see that feet is in the numerator position. In the first dimensional analysis step, I'm going to convert feet to inches because I don't know how many centimeters are in a foot. Notice why I put foot on the bottom of this dimensional analysis step. So they'll cross cancel out one another in a moment. And I can then put inches in the numerator, the top position. So I know there's 12 inches in one foot. So wherever the inch unit is, that's where the number 12 goes. 12 inches is equal to one foot. And so the two feet units end up canceling out. Well, I need to do another step, another multiply sign, another division bar. Now in this next step, I'm going to cancel inches, which is currently in the numerator position. So in this next step, I'm going to place it in the denominator position. And now I can put centimeters in the numerator position because I can look at the top circled conversion on the left, 2.54 centimeters. So wherever a centimeter is, that's where the 2.54 goes, is equal to one inch. And notice the two inch units end up canceling out. And now I just have to get a calculator and I multiply 12, uh, I multiply 25 times 12 times 2.54, and that should give me three, uh, excuse me, 700, 762, so 762 centimeters. Notice dimensional analysis showed me multiply these numbers. I don't have to divide anything in this problem. That's the benefit of dimensional analysis. So here's another problem that involves two steps. So here's a person, they're wearing a smartwatch, you know, a fitness tracker, and they say, phew, I just ran two miles. I wonder how many yards that is. I'm going to actually, actually need not just this one conversion, but this one as well. I'm going to need both of these. I'm going to need two steps to solve this problem. Start with what I've been given. I've been given the distance of two miles. I'm going to divide it by one. It still means two miles by dividing by one, but I now see miles is a numerator uh, unit. And so in the first dimensional analysis step, I'm going to try to cancel miles, which is currently a numerator. So I'm going to put it in the denominator position. I'm going to try to go from miles into feet, first of all, and look at the conversion I circled, 5,280 feet. So wherever feet is, that's where 5,280 goes. And that's equal to one mile. So wherever mile is, that's where the number one goes. The two mile units end up canceling out. But I now need another step that will help me go from feet to yards. And so feet is currently a numerator in, uh, in the numerator position. So I need to put it in the denominator position so it'll cross cancel. I want my answer in yards. And so the other conversion that I have circled is that three feet equals a yard. So wherever you see feet, put the number three. Three feet is equal to one yard. The feet units end up canceling. Now I get out my calculator and I can solve. Two times 5,280 times one, that's 10,560 yards for the numerator. The denominator is just one times one times three, which is three. So now I divide these and I get my final answer of 3,520 yards. Notice what dimensional analysis showed me. It showed me when to multiply and when to divide. So let's end with kind of a fun problem. Maybe you're like this person. Have you ever wondered how many seconds are there in a single calendar year? Well, we can use dimensional analysis. We're, act we're actually going to need about four steps to solve this problem. In my first step, take what I've been given, one year, and divide it by one. It still means one year but I see year is a numerator uh, unit right now. In the first step, you know, I don't know how many seconds are in a year. That's what I'm trying to learn. But I do know how, that in one year, there are 365 days. So right now, the year units end up canceling out. Well, I need another step. I don't know how many seconds are in a day, but I do know that in one day, there are approximately 24 hours. I know it's not exactly 24 hours, but approximately 24 hours. And so the two day units cancel out. Well, I'm still not at my final unit of seconds, so I gotta keep going. I need another step. How many seconds are in an hour? You know, I'm not sure. But I do know that in one hour, there are 60 minutes. And so the two hour units cancel out. Well, I'm almost there. I have my answer converted now to minutes but I have to do another step. 
and I finally know that in one minute there are 60 seconds and so the two minute units end up canceling out and now I can go ahead and get out a calculator and solve 1 times 365 times 24 times 60 times 60 is 31 million 536,000 seconds. Notice dimensional analysis showed me multiply all these numbers together. I don't have to divide anything in this particular problem. That's the beauty of dimensional analysis. It shows you when to multiply and when to divide. I hope you found this video helpful. If you're in my class, I'm here to help. And everybody else, uh, thank you for watching.